In March of 2008, what should have been a typical day turned into a living nightmare for freshman university student Lauren Burke when she was abducted and held at gunpoint by an unknown man. Lauren lost her life that day after a desperate attempt to save herself. This is her story. Lauren Ashley Burke was born on December 30, 1989, to parents Vivian and James. Lauren was one of three children with a sister and a brother. Following graduation from Walton High School, Lauren excitedly started her college years at Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama, alongside her high school sweetheart, Sean McQuaid. Lauren never had a hard time making friends and had a notable campus presence despite it only being her first year there. She was bubbly, well-liked, and an excellent student. Lauren left her boyfriend's dorm on the evening of March 4, 2008. She was heading to the Ralph B. Drogan Library to study with a friend. She had no way of knowing, but at that same time, a man was roaming the campus trying to find any unsuspecting victim to rob. At 8 p.m., he spotted Lauren walking up to her black 2001 Honda Civic and approached her with his revolver drawn. He forced Lauren into her own car while the man got into the driver's side. Lauren immediately knew how serious this situation was and handed him the $200 she had, pleading to be let go. Her abductor ignored her pleas and sped off, one hand on the wheel and the other pointing the gun right at Lauren. They pulled out of campus and the man ordered Lauren to undress. Again, not wanting to set the man off, Lauren complied. Lauren was now naked in the passenger seat. For the next 30 minutes, the man drove around town, seemingly undecided about his actual plan. He told Lauren about his life's struggles while she tried to say anything that would have him let her go. The man had mentioned that he was unemployed, and Lauren tried to reason with him that she would help him find a job. While they drove along Highway 147, Lauren's boyfriend called her. Her abductor allowed her to answer the phone, but on the condition she made up a cover story. Lauren made up an excuse for her missing study session and abruptly hung up. At this stage, it became clear to Lauren that she needed to take drastic action. Her only option seemed like getting out of the car, even though it was moving. As Lauren made her last-ditch attempt to get to safety and leapt from the car, she was callously shot by her abductor. Shocked onlookers heard the sound of two gunshots before seeing a nude woman jumping onto the tarmac from a moving vehicle. The woman was, of course, Lauren Burke. The car drove off after idling momentarily, leaving his victim on the road. Lauren used what was left of her strength to stumble to her feet, scraped up from the fall and bleeding profusely. Witnesses were soon by Lauren's side. She was now lying on her back, taking deep, slow breaths and gasping. First responders were promptly on the scene, trying to save Lauren. She was transported to East Alabama Medical Center. Lauren Burke was pronounced dead at 9.35 p.m. despite everyone's best efforts. She died from rapid blood loss from the gunshot wound to her back. At 9.30 p.m., roughly 30 minutes after Lauren was seen jumping from the car, authorities received a call about a vehicle on fire on the Auburn campus. The flames were extinguished. Inside the car, investigators found a 38 caliber bullet under the driver's seat. The authorities needed to crack down the owner of this car. Running the plates, they found it belonged to James Burke, Lauren's father. One can only imagine James' shock on receiving a phone call about his daughter's burnt-out car. After he got off the phone with one of the officers, James began calling Lauren's friends. Hours later, he would be identifying his daughter's body. Now, police needed to track down the person responsible. Three days later, they had their man. On March 7th, Phoenix City Police Officer Dave Richards pulled over a man who sped through a construction zone. He asked for his identification and learned the man's name was Courtney Lockhart. Courtney Laurel Lockhart was born on October 20, 1984. He joined the U.S. Army in 2003 when he was 19 years old. 
he went into the 2nd Battalion, 17th Field Artillery. The following year, Lockhart was deployed to Korea. In 2005, he was deployed to Ramadi, Iraq. Iraq, at this time, was going through a particularly treacherous time. Lockhart's battalion, like many other groups, suffered heavy losses. He himself almost lost his life twice and witnessed three of his brothers-in-arms burned to death. To add to his trauma, Lockhart's best friend was killed after driving past a roadside bomb. After returning from Iraq, Lockhart's battalion settled in at Fort Carson, Colorado. It was there that Lockhart first began experiencing symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome, commonly known as PTSD. He suffered from anxiety, rapid mood swings, and nightmares. Many other soldiers at Fort Carson were also battling, which resulted in a number of men not receiving the appropriate care. Lockhart witnessed this and later stated it was why he didn't seek help for his mental health issues, instead turning to marijuana. In 2006, following a failed drug screening, Lockhart got into an altercation with another soldier in the dining room. He was court-martialed for the incident and his drug use, going on to serve seven months in military prison. Lockhart was then dishonorably discharged meaning he had no access to veteran care for his PTSD or other medical issues. Lockhart moved back in with his family in Alabama and found work in construction. As he had no help or therapy, his PTSD symptoms remained. After Courtney Lockhart was pulled over on March 7th, Officer Richards called his name in and found out that investigators wanted him for questioning. Lockhart was asked to step out of the vehicle, but he refused. A brief struggle with Officer Richards followed before Lockhart sped off, and a police chase ensued. Lockhart's driving was described as reckless, and he attempted to discard his gun by throwing it out his window during the chase. Lockhart ended up slamming the brakes with his car screeching to a stop. At the same time, he flung open his door which saw an officer in pursuit on a motorcycle slam into the door and be thrown onto the road. Lockhart took off into the woods before being apprehended by officers. He was handcuffed and arrested. Lauren's iPod and cell phone were on his person, and a later search of his car revealed shell casings for a 38 and a blood-spotted t-shirt. Lockhart was taken to the station for questioning, where he confessed to murdering Lauren Burke and setting her car alight. Investigators learned that Lockhart stopped at a gas station on North College Road after leaving Lauren on the road. He then used her credit card to buy gas, which he used to set fire to her car in order to get rid of the evidence, having left her clothing and camera behind. He left the campus in his car and drove along Interstate 85 to Atlanta, Georgia, again using Lauren's credit card to buy gas. Courtney Lockhart was indicted for murder while committing a robbery, murder while committing a kidnapping, and murder while committing attempted sexual assault. He pleaded not guilty to all charges by reason of insanity. His defense tried to move the trial away from Lee County, fearing prejudice from the extensive media coverage following Lauren's death. Judge Jacob Walker denied the motion, and the trial began in November 2010. The prosecution argued that Courtney Lockhart kidnapped Lauren intending to rape her before intentionally shooting her while she tried to escape. Lockhart's defense argued that he suffered from mental illness from his time serving in the military, adding that he shot Lauren accidentally. It took the jury six and a half hours to decide Lockhart's fate. They found him guilty of robbery, kidnapping, and capital murder. He was not found guilty of the attempted sexual assault. The jury had the power to recommend the death penalty, but they found that Lauren's murder was not especially heinous or cruel and suggested Lockhart be sentenced to life in prison. Judge Walker disagreed and overturned the jury's recommendation. On March 2, 2011, almost three years to the day of the crime, Judge Walker sentenced Lockhart to death by lethal injection. He argued that Lockhart's previous criminal acts, which the jury had not been informed of, and his kidnapping of Lauren helped influence his decision towards sentencing him to death. Lauren was alone, unarmed, and she was chosen by Lockhart at random, Judge Walker said. 
The kidnapping is even more egregious because she was taken from a college campus, a place where students should feel safe, and forced into her own car. Lockhart forced her to undress and held her at gunpoint to prevent her escape. After Lauren's murder, Courtney Lockhart embarked on a violent crime spree in Alabama and Georgia, again choosing lone female victims in all but one instance. These crimes included robbing a woman in a parking lot of a Georgia nursing home on March 5th and robbing a woman on March 6th while pointing a gun at her three-year-old son's head. On March 7th, Lockhart assaulted an elderly woman in a Walmart parking lot in Georgia, hitting her in the back of the head and forcing her into her vehicle. If it wasn't for an obvious witness who started following Lockhart, resulting in him abandoning the vehicle, the woman might have ended up like Lauren. Following his conviction and death sentence, Lockhart appealed to decision. The Alabama Court of Criminal Appeals upheld the original conclusion. The record reflects that Lockhart's sentence was not imposed under the influence of passion, prejudice, or any other arbitrary factor. We determine that Lockhart's sentence is neither disproportionate nor excessive to the penalty imposed in similar crimes, the court stated. Lockhart petitioned for a rehearing, but the Court of Criminal Appeals again denied this in April 2014. Multiple petitions followed before hearings were finally granted in December 2018 and February 2019. Lockhart's defense attorneys from the Equal Justice Initiative claimed that his original defense hadn't accurately shown evidence that expressed the true extent of his trauma, which influenced the shooting. The new defense also requested that an expert be brought in to test the gun used, as it could potentially reveal that it had, in fact, accidentally discharged. Despite this latest attempt, Lockhart's latest petition was denied. Alabama prosecutors had successfully argued that the state's experts had caused no doubt regarding the tests they conducted to come to the conclusion that Lockhart pulled the trigger. As of today, Courtney Lockhart remains on death row at Hallman Correctional Facility in Atmore, Alabama. Lauren's parents have been vocal of their support in Lockhart's death sentence. He didn't give her a second chance, he shouldn't get a second chance either, Vivian said at his 2018 hearing. James reiterated their feelings at the 2019 hearing, saying, We maintain our desire for the death penalty. Lauren did get the death penalty without a hearing, and we will do anything it takes to continue this process. Even if it goes to the Supreme Court, the Burke family will never give up. <laughs>